Hey everyone, thanks for joining us on this edition of Rugged Outdoors Guide. By the way, thank you to my millions of subscribers that, it's what? Oh, it's not that, it's not that channel. Oh, it's only my, sorry, that was the other channel. It's only hundreds of thousands of subscribers to uh, Rugged Outdoors Guide. Uh, yes, I'm being extremely sarcastic. In fact, as of making this video, if you look carefully to the side, see how many subscribers I have? I have way, way under 10 subscribers total, all right? But you know what? I'm telling you that because it doesn't matter. What matters is you. I'm not doing this video for them who haven't subscribed. I'm doing it for you, all right? Um, I have got some really, really interesting stuff today that I really, really wanted to do for myself. And what it is, is it is a canoe seat, a custom canoe seat. Now, if you've watched any other videos that we have on our channel or seen any of our blog entries, we recommend certain seats for a canoe. Uh, there are some by uh, Spring Creek Manufacturing, I think makes one, and there are a few others. They're good, they're good, and we recommend them for sure, especially if you don't have time to mess around with making your own. But the problem is that the ones we've found have been kind of harsh on your hands if they're temporary seats, like removable ones. They have these bulky things on the side and you can't really paddle very well because if your hand go goes anywhere near the gunnel, which it will when you're paddling, you'll scrape it, you'll bash it. it. It just doesn't work nicely with the gunnel. So what I'm doing is not only a seat today, but a removable seat that looks like it's not removable, right? It sort of integrates really nicely with the canoe itself. So I'd like to get started with just kind of giving you some really basic ideas of how to begin, and then I'll give you uh, the processes that I went through. I didn't look on YouTube, by the way, to get any ideas. This is straight from here. I don't know if that's a good thing, but we hope it is. Okay, so the first thing you got to know is that when you're making a seat, um, well, first of all, you got to decide what kind of seat. This, as you can see, is a partially made seat. Uh, it's going to have nylon webbing through here, and that's going to be part two. But for, the, for this one, uh, for, the, for, for the first part, I should say, of this video, we're going to talk about how to get this frame ready to go. Now, the first thing you have to have to have to understand is that if it's going to be a drop-in seat, the the outsides of the like the the full width of the, of the seat can't be any bigger than the inside of the gunnels all right so some seats are actually bigger because there's tumble home right you know what tumble home is there's your gunnels and then your canoe actually goes out before it goes back in and around to the other side well the seat can fit under the gunnels, it can be bigger, but if you want to pull it out, you're going to smash into the bottom of the gunnels, right? So it, you can kind of jiggle them out some, sometimes, depending on how you put it in, but really what you want is to be able to just go boop and just pull it out, okay? So all I'm saying is just measure very carefully, and I'm not going to tell you what those measurements are because every canoe is different. I made this one to fit near the middle of my canoe so I can go soloing. I've got a Winona uh, Escape, a tripping canoe and it has a fairly narrow 33 inch uh, beam at the widest part so I made these about 30 just over 30 inches all right so um, that's kind of an important part to start all right now here's here's where it gets good what I did I'm kind of cheap and I don't like spending a lot of money on stuff and so I went to Home Depot got myself some deck board right uh, just like this oh what's that oh huh. My daughter's decorations. Great. Okay, so deck board. Um, this is about five and a quarter inches across, something like that. And then whatever depth they come uh, is, is gonna be fine. So you can get pressure treated, probably that's all they, you'll be able to get. You can get the green kind, but I would get the, the brown sienna, I believe it's called, um, uh, injected. Uh, pressure treated lumber instead of the green. But anyway, that's up to you, it doesn't really matter. All right, so now, what I did was I ripped them into strips. And of course, when you're making a seat from scratch, what you'll wanna be sure to do is to round the edges. Okay, so what I did then was, 
I made the frame for it and I made my, you can see these cross pieces are pretty wide. I'm going to do webbing all in here because it's a wide part of the canoe and I might want um, a couple of kids to sit on this as well. So it's probably a bit wider than I need, but also if I want to sit near the gunwale, if I'm soloing, um, I want to get kind of near to the edge. So I, I didn't want the webbing to be just in the middle. I wanted it to go as close to the edges as I could. Okay, so in a nutshell, what I did was I got two pieces, two main cross pieces. Uh, I just, as I said, I ripped them from the deck board and mine are just, just under one and a half inches wide and then whatever length it is. And I did the same, the same with these. I did these, uh, I cut these cross pieces in here so that the entire thing would be about 10 and a half or so inches from here to here. Right, I just, I had another canoe that has these uh, seats, webbed seats, so I just used it as a bit of a template. So that's basically the frame. I just screwed it together, glued it. All right, so pretty simple. And then I thought, hey, for, for the sake of, of um, safety, not safety so much, but comfort and uh, just ease of working with it, uh, I wanted to, I don't know if you can see, I wanted to round the edges off on any outside edge of any of these, these uh, cross pieces, all right? And that just makes it look good when you wrap the webbing around it eventually. So then I thought, well, I started making it so it was not removable. And then I thought, no, this is way better to have it removable. So what I did was I made some, some extra pieces. There's just one little chunk of the same, the same uh, material that I made these from. Just, you know, I, I cut chunks off. And uh, it was started off as square and I just made them. I don't know if you can see they're all rounded edges. I just have a, um, a belt sander and I just kind of grabbed it like this and put it on the belt sander and kind of went around it so that it was nicely rounded on the edges. And these are the pieces, these guys here that stick up from the ends. Um, so these, uh, I thought, okay, this is great, but I need to find a system whereby I can connect these to the seat. Now, don't be fooled. If you use wood screws, it'll work in the short term, but in the long term, it's not really a good thing because wood screws are, um, uh, they can eventually rip out with a lot of pressure and maybe some weathering and wearing. And I, I just, I don't like that uh, idea. I've seen too many rip out after, you know, wood has been rotted and it, it just, I don't know, I don't like that idea. So, so most canoe manufacturers will have a threaded rod of some kind going through from the bottom of their seats right up through these supports uh, to the top. Now right here typically would be the gunnels and you would screw it to the bottom of the gunnels and a threaded rod or a bolt would go up right through the gunnel. It's one method and then it would be attached like that um, somehow. Um, I, as I said, I wanted to make it uh, portable. So I thought, well, what can I do? And uh, it took me a while to kind of figure out the best way of doing it. And so here's what I came up with. You're looking at it right here. So I have four of these pieces. Now, obviously I don't have them on this side. This is a work in progress, but I, I didn't finish it because I wanted to show you kind of the steps that I'm taking to get to uh, the end product. So I took, I'll just show you here individually. So. I took these, one of these four pieces and I had to go to Lowe's or Home Depot uh, to get a threaded rod. So honestly, the best, the best uh, size rod is 3 16 that I found and um, you need a, a bunch of uh, nuts and washers as well as lock washers, All right, just, just to be on the safe side. And I, I drilled a hole I don't know if you can see, well, you can't really see because you don't know what's, it's all dark on the other side. I drilled a hole right through these. You need to do that. Problem is, uh, these are four inches long, which is about a, a good average depth for a typical canoe to have your seats below the gunnels, around four inches-ish, give or take. I didn't have a 3 sixteenths drill um, big and, or long enough to go right through. And you want to use 3 16 You don't want it any bigger than you need to. 3 16 for the 3 16 threaded rod, all right? So 
Uh, if it's any bigger, it becomes really awkward and floppy and you need big washers and I don't know if you can even find ones that really work. So stick with 316. So what I did was I kind of measured where I wanted the hole on each individual one and I drilled down. I actually just held it with my hand like this, drilled through it. And then I got about um, three quarters or a little bit more of the way through, but of course the other side, it didn't come out the other side. So uh, I, at that point I had to just guess. I literally just guessed and just kind of went, I think it's somewhere about there and I drilled through and in every case I was able to hit it, not perfectly, but enough so that I could kind of jiggle it around and eventually get the connection to go really well so that the threaded rod does work. So now, I've got the piece hanging right here. All right, so now this goes up to the uh, to the gunnel up here. So, what? How's it going to stick to the gunnel if it's a removable seat? So I was thinking and thinking, and what I came up with was a simple angle iron thingy like this. All right, you can get them at any hardware store. I had to drill an extra hole. So there's, it comes with a bunch of holes in it. So you can see there's a bunch of random looking holes. It comes with a bunch in it. I had to drill my own. And all it is, is on the top. So the, the bottom piece is on the seat of these, these, cross, of these uh, braces and then on the top. And this just gets screwed on top of the threaded rod. And so that's what you're looking at here. Um, threaded rod right through and then you got these these pieces here now I found these the best scenario for these threaded rod pieces in my case is be uh, about six inches long and then you can you can kind of file them and, and uh, grind them and finesse them later but anyways I found I just did a preliminary setup on my canoe put them in and it seems to work really really well with these. Now these, these are loose because I'm, I'm not finished with them. Uh, eventually I'll glue these down and tighten them up and grind these off nicely. And, uh, and of course when I'm done you'll, you'll see that, that, that finished product. And welcome to day number two of our tutorial on how to build the drop-in canoe seat. Um, I've glued these pieces to, uh, onto, uh, well everything together actually, these, these um, cross pieces here, uh, every piece you see has been glued, uh, but then these uprights, the, well, I don't know what you call them, supports or whatever, they are attached, as I mentioned earlier, with a threaded rod as well. I don't trust just you know plain old glue to support my weight through all weathers and all different weights and uh, you know rough and tumble. So. That's what most canoe manufacturers do. Actually, every single one will have a threaded rod of some kind that goes uh, through these supports, whatever the supports look like. All right, so I've also uh, covered the surface of this raw wood with, I used an oil. If I had had it, I would have used probably a Valspar Marine finish. And that's what I would suggest you do if you can get a hold of some. It's much, it just looks um, really, really glossy and smooth, and it is, and it's just really, really nice feeling, and it's extremely weather resistant. It's perfect. This is another method that I found some, some use for with the gunnels of my um, uh, wooden, well, the, the canoe that I have with wood gunnels, and it is tongue oil. Now, officially, tongue oil is supposed to be used only for interior wood surfaces. Technically, that's probably a good idea to follow what the manufacturer says. However, I'm deviating a bit because I have used it on my wood gunnels on one of my canoes for years and they still look like the day I put them on. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Officially, it's for indoors, but I mean, I don't, I don't leave the canoe outside all year, right? So it's only out for a little while, a couple of weeks during the year maximum, it's exposed to the elements. So that's kind of the same approach I'm taking with this seat. All right, so now what I'm gonna do in a, in a few seconds, see, this, this, this is how the seat sits, all right? Um, and so this will be the top. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be turning it over like this, and then on the bottom, I'm gonna start stapling the webbing on. And I'll put information on where I got that. I got my webbing at Amazon. There are other places you can get it, maybe even for a better deal, but mine came in a day and 
it wasn't very expensive and it's exactly what I need. So let's get started on that right now. Okay, now just so you know, I'm new to this. I have never done this before and I'm guessing if you're watching this, you haven't either. So um, this is the bottom of my seat and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna curl this, this webbing over. Now, I'm not gonna cut it. I'm going to, at this point, I'm gonna leave it on a roll so that I can have a lot of extra to pull on. And then once I finish stapling both ends of it, I will then cut it off. And I'm just going to, in my case, I'm just going to use a pair of scissors like this. And then I've got a little um, sort of a hand torch here, like a lighter. And I'm going to just uh, burn, not burn, but just heat the edges up of the, um, the, the cut edge of the um, webbing just to, uh, to keep it from fraying. All right, so... I'm going to get started here. I don't know how much I'm going to need. I know that I have a lot more than I need. One last thing before we get started. This is the bottom of the seat. The easy thing to do would be to put the webbing just like right here on the bottom like this and then just fire staples through the top. Ideally, um, if you look at what the pros do uh, on um, canoes that come with seats like this, is they'll wrap it around the back at so, the, so not just the bottom of the seat, but even more around onto this little lip down here. So I'm gonna try to do that, and I'm gonna try to get my staple gun to go in on this angle. Uh, it'll, it'll be a bit of an angle because I can't fit it down into this hole. So it would be easier if I just put it on top like this and, and fired them in here, which is probably fine as well. But we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll change my mind uh, once I get started. Okay guys, quick update. I have finished my first row here, or, or the, you know, the first direction of webbing. Um, okay, I have to eat a little bit of humble pie, just a little bit of humble pie here. See where I, I said I was gonna start to wrap this right around the edge? Well, as you can see, these ones here, uh, I didn't quite do that. And the reason is that it was just so, so difficult to, for me to get these tight and uh, it just was more of a challenge. So I ended up doing these on the bottom. Uh, I said that's specifically what I didn't want to do, but uh, I don't think it'll make any difference uh, in the long run. What difference it did make is that these ones are actually tighter than the first ones I did where I tried to wrap it around, uh, I guess, too many corners. All right, so that's the update that I can give you at this point. And also, right here on the, <laughs> I would suggest maybe being a little bit more precise than I was. I started fairly, uh, fairly well here. I left a little gap between the piece of wood, or the cross piece, and the first strap. But when I got to the other end, um, I had to actually overlap on top here a tiny, tiny bit. So it's going to be a little bit awkward for me to weave it, but if I didn't, the spacing would be all really weird. So I didn't actually space it as well as I should have. So now I'm going to go the opposite direction and weave it through and uh, see what we come up with. I'll show you the final product. All right, guys, I am on my last strap here, and I'm going to use a pair of pliers to kind of pull as hard as I can. There we go. All right, guys, as you can see, I'm using um, a compressed air gun and I'm using staples. Um, these are half inch staples and that's all, I, all you need. I wouldn't go any longer. You're gonna end up smashing them in with a hammer and you might bend them. Um, I also wouldn't go any shorter, so a half inch is good. And what we have here is um, my best attempt at doing my final, final, you know what I'm gonna do? Right here, just before I show you the final product, which I haven't even seen, I'm gonna cut that off. That little piece, that's just going in the garbage. And then I'll do my final end sealing. There we go. Guys, if you have a hot knife, um, that would be even better to cut through these, uh, these ends because then you don't have to use a, uh, a lighter or a torch or anything like that to seal the ends. I do not have one, so too bad for me. All right, here's the big reveal. Da-da. 
Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so um, it's pretty, pretty sturdy. Looks, looks pretty professional. There's a lot more webbing than in, in most seats that I see, but that's because this is going to take the uh, the entire center of the canoe. It's it's quite taut, uh, as 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 good or better than my professionally done canoe with this exact same webbing, and uh, so yeah, I'm pretty proud of it. Mwah. Don't worry, I won't do that after too many people have sat on it. Okay, so guys, just before we do the final sit in canoe test for the seat, what we're going to do is finish screwing in the. Um, threaded rods. I've told you about them before, right? 316 threaded rod that goes right through these supports. Uh, this of course is upside down. What I've done is I've cut them into six inch pieces. The riser part is only four inches. It sticks out on both sides. So what, I, what I've done is I've got a 316 inch washer at the very bottom against the wood. And then I've got a 316 lock washer and then just a regular 316 nut. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do all, all four of these. I'm going to do them the same way. I'm going to put Loctite in there so that it doesn't come undone or there's some resistance to having this ever come loose. Even though I've got the lock washer, I'm going to do Loctite and the lock washer because I never plan to make that loose again. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw them all down really tight. I'm going to have this chunk sticking out the top and I'm going to cut that off with a, an angle grinder and then just you know kind of finish it so it doesn't you know snag any clothing or cause any damage to skin. Right? And I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I'm done. That's what it looks like. All right, and so of course this one is removable, right? So it's got these things. So let's go do the final, final test. Stick it in the canoe, see what it looks like, see what it feels like. Here it goes. Moment of truth. I haven't done this before. I know it needs to go somewhere about here. <laughs> Let's see what it feels like, feels like. Oh, nice and soft and springy, but yet firm on my butt. So guys, looks like we have success. All right guys, that's basically it. That's how you can make your own either removable, like I did, or your permanent um, extra or maybe solo canoe seat, all right? It's a webbed seat and it looks as good as anything you'd buy on the market. Guys, I hope it's helped you. And if, it, if so, you can continue to check out our channel. We're actually fairly new and so we don't have tons of videos, but boy, are we ever gonna have a whole lot of videos. We're gonna have more than any other sort of paddling TV type of thing that we can find on the internet. We hope, we hope, all right? So stay tuned, check us out. And guys, remember, whatever you do, get out there and enjoy God's creation, right? It's there for you to enjoy. And above all, keep on looking up.